<laughs> well, actually, I own two businesses now. Um, Man, he could just stay in there. I own a, uh, a contracting school and a uh, insurance company. But yeah, uh, I'm humbled and honored that Elliot, you know, asked me to come here and speak. So uh, thank you, Elliot. Elliot's a great coach. He's a great leader. I uh, much respect to Elliot. So um, yeah, like like Elliot read in my bio, I deployed actually. Uh, Seven times, five times to Afghanistan, one time to Iraq with the army, and one time to Iraq again with the State Department. My jobs concluded as a, a rifleman, sniper, sniper team leader, sniper section leader, and then the last eight months of my uh, army career, I was a ranger instructor. And so when I was thinking about this class, there's really five points of leadership that I think are missing today and the first one would be point one would be keep your mouth shut and listen and that might sound silly but that's literally a superpower and the example I have is when I was 19 I joined the army and I told my dad hey dad in 15 days I'm shipping off and to my surprise I thought he was gonna be like hey go run go get ready let's go shooting let's do something so you're successful but what he said was because my dad was in the military he said, son, just keep your mouth shut and listen and you'll do fine. And it was, it, it was kind of a shock to me. And I took that to heart and through basic airborne school, ranger school, ranger indoctrination program, when I got to my first platoon, that's really all I did. And what happened was I promoted faster than my peers. I went to ranger school before my peers. I actually went to ranger school before my first deployment, which is unheard of. And I, I became a leader um, by the time I was 20. I was leading men into combat, and when, when 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 my buddies and my peers would ask me, like, hey, player, what are you doing? That's different. Why are you getting promoted faster? Why are you going to schools before us? The only thing I really had to answer was, like, dude, I just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and uh, so that, that's my first point. Rather, if you want to be a leader or if you are a leader, you still have to keep your mouth shut and listen. You have to listen to your subordinates. You have to listen to the people above you. There's always something you can learn. You don't have all the answers. And... Uh, it literally has been a, uh, it's been like a, it literally, it's been like a superpower in my life. Um, and the point two would be, great leaders don't always have the answer, but they know how to find the answer. So as a, as a young leader, obviously I didn't have all the answers, right? So quickly, I knew I had to figure out how I could find the answers. So if you're not a leader, but you're being led, and you, you, you approach your leader and you realize, hey, he doesn't have the answers. Well, it doesn't mean he's a bad leader, right? Um, a bad leader would act like he has all the answers. So as a good leader, whether you're leading yourself or you're being led, you need to understand that, hey, you're not gonna have all the, all the answers. But like I own a, a business eight doors down and one of my, my main employees, he just recently came to me, he's like, hey, thanks for being the type of guy that when I approach you and you don't know the answer, you don't act like you know the answer. So, so he, he said like, cause I used the team to find the answer, right? Hey, I don't know everything. I actually, one of my employees, he actually knows more about insurance than I do, but he just works for me. Um, so we, we work together to find those answers. So point two would be like, don't treat your leader bad or talk bad about him if he just doesn't know the answer, help him find the answers, right? And point three I think is missing today would be uh, loyalty. Now that's obviously common sense to a lot of us, but in today's society, I think there's a, uh, a lack of loyalty when it comes to you know being led and leaders in themselves. I see way too many times, um, whether when I was deployed with the army or in business, people are willing to just fire people over small mistakes. They're willing to kick their, you know, their so-called friends that are curbs for anything. And we all have those people in our lives that, I mean, you can take this with relationships and the work environment. If you're not loyal, I mean, you don't, you don't want to be around that person, right? We all have, uh, a good example was in my first platoon, hands down was the worst platoon out of my military career. I was a new guy, I went there, and everybody was willing, like wanting to promote themselves by making the guy next to him look bad, right? There's no loyalty, there's no, um, I just felt like, man, this is something that's really, really missing in, in, in this platoon. 
And so when I became a leader, I said, like, I'm going to make sure my guys know, like, like, no matter what, you make a mistake, I'm not going to try to fire you. I'm not going to try to, you know, get you hurt. I'm just going to stay loyal to you. And it's paid off because I'm still friends with a lot of guys I've led just by implementing, you know, it, um, that loyalty. And, and the fourth thing would be being a leader is hard, but it doesn't take any talent. Um, I learned this when... When I was in basic training, I've never led anybody up to this. And to my surprise, when the when the drill sergeant was like going through and he was like asking people, hey, do you wanna do you wanna lead? Do you wanna lead? And some of these guys were like, Yeah, I wanna lead, I wanna lead. I should have said that because what happened was I said, No, Josiah, I don't wanna lead, right? Biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> so what happened was the next day I was in charge of the whole platoon, right? And what he did, he forced me to lead. And what I realized was, you know, I'm average height, average weight, average smart, every, everything about me is average. But yeah, I was in charge of 35 guys and we were still accomplishing everything. So what I realized was, hey, it just takes courage. It just takes uh, someone willing to lead. That's why I don't think we have very many leaders, let alone good leaders, because there's not too many people that are just willing to, you know, step up and lead. So if you find yourself not liking your leader, just, just step up. That's all it takes. You don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to be talented. You just have to be willing to lead. And the fifth point I think is the most important. Is if you guys take away anything that I've said is is uh, the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Is to treat others like you you want to be treated, right? So in my first platoon, what we had was a sense of um, when we taught people, we installed fear and intimidation, right? Now it's a different environment than like insurance or whatever, right? We're going to, we're going to combat, we're going to war, right? Maybe you can apply to different stuff, but when a new guy came along, we installed fear and intimidation in order for him to get, you know, to learn things, learn his past. It's not the way it should have been done. Because what I saw was we were creating a new guy who was soon going to be a leader, right? Whether a year, two years, however long down the road, he was. Because when I asked my peers, like, "Hey, I like, man, I can't wait to be a leader just so I don't have to deal with, you know, Sergeant So and So, and I can lead my own way." The problem was everybody was like, "No, I can't wait to be a leader so I can treat people bad," hmm. and it was it was this this cycle, this bad cycle of of you know bad leadership breeding bad leaders. And uh, it's really hard to break the cycle. I mean, how many of us know like an abusive dad that raised abusive kids or, or something like that, a drunk that raises a drunk? It's, it's the cycle. So, and in Ranger Regiment, it's known as, I mean, if any of you are in the infantry and that unit, don't mean to hurt your feelings, but this is just a fact. Ranger Regiment is known as the greatest infantry fighting unit in the world. Um, it's documented, you know, Saving Private Ryan is Ranger Regiment. Black Hawk Down is Ranger Regiment. It's a famous unit. Now, they have to get people ready for combat, and the problem is these guys aren't learning at a speed which they should be learning at. It's like we have to teach them communication, we have to teach them battle drills, and the issue was they're just not learning at, a, at, the, at the speed that they should be. And so people are getting fired, people are getting hurt. Um, when, when it comes to, you know, operating certain equipment, they're just not up to speed. And the issue is, every time they have to be taught, they have like, oh man, if I mess this up, I'm, they're just nervous, they're scared. It's a bad environment. There's a study put out by big corporations like, like Microsoft and these that when you create a harsh environment, you're not gonna learn. That's why I love, I love Elliot's gym. You come in here, a new guy, and it's just like, no, no, you're not gonna roll, you're gonna do it, you know, certain things. It's like, it's a good environment for learning. And that's, that's what you have to bring, whether in your, your personal life, whether you have kids, your, your business, whatever it is, you have to be able to break that cycle. So my challenge is, if you've been led by a bad leader, like, because I made this mistake. When I became a leader, I was, I was 20 years old, and I've only been bad, taught bad stuff, so what did I do? I, I installed fear and intimidation. But what I soon realized was, the guys I was leading, they, they had, you know, they, no respect, there's no loyalty. So I had to like step back and look and be like, how can I go about this different? And then when I took over the sniper section, I was in charge of the whole sniper section, uh, I realized I had to go about things a little bit different. And 
A good example is one of my best friends, Sergeant York, who lives in Reno now. And when he came, he was a, uh, he's what we call like a, a free spirit. He'd go out drinking, he's partying a lot, right? And he showed up late as a new guy. You, you don't do that in the military. And a lot of them wanted just to kick him through the curb. What I did was, I don't know why, I just liked him. So I took him as my own sniper partner. So I was directly responsible for him. I, I, I instead of installing fear and intimidation, I, I gave him a good environment to learn. I told him what he had to learn, when he had to learn it by. I worked with him over and over. And what happened was he actually became one of the best snipers in that um, sniper section. He took over the whole Bravo section, which is a, is a big deal. And the moral of the story is that I, I put a lot of time and effort into that guy. And there's actually a time when, when he very well could have saved my life by his actions on the battlefield. And we were talking about this a couple months ago. And and after I got out a couple years later, he asked me, or he told me, he's like, hey, hey Ryan, thanks for being that type of leader that helped me out. He used to call me uh, a Jedi master as a joke. And uh, it really, like, it, it meant a lot to me just because it's like I never really did anything special. All I did was I made sure I didn't do what my bad leaders did. So I actually learned more from my bad leaders. So my challenge is, if you ever have those bad leaders, just realize, hey, this guy's a bad leader because of X, Y, Z. So when you're in that spot, just don't do those things. And then you'll end up being successful. So that's my challenge for you guys. Um, you guys have any questions regarding you know business, my military career, leadership, anything along those lines? What, what would you do to change behavior? You're talking about uh, providing 